We have a great guest on now, and we're talking about things that are really going to affect Rhode Islanders and in a very, very positive way. So um, I'm really excited about this. And we have Kathleen Connell on the phone with us, and she is the state director for AARP. And we are talking about the new CARE Act that just came into law. Welcome, Kathleen. Hello, Patricia. Isn't this a nice day? (laughs) Yes, it is, and it's great to have you on. Yes. All right. Well, you know, how long have you been with the AARP? Got to get a little of the backstory here, Kathleen. Oh, gosh, it's been a long time now, Patricia. It's uh, 13 years. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? And, boy, and they've done so much for the state. And you've you've held office, (laughs) but you've also held office in our state. I did. I was the Secretary of State. Mm. Well, for three terms. Oh, wonderful. And now you're with a very large organization that's really helping people 50 plus and seniors. So right. what I really want to talk about is this CARE Act, which just became law in Rhode Island, and it's really going to help caregivers. So explain it to us, please. Okay. Um, we are really excited in having this law passed in Rhode Island. Um, AARP has long been a leader in the healthcare field um, and has done innumerable studies on what the healthcare systems need, what they want, what uh, is missing, et cetera. And as these studies have come in and people have paid more and more attention, it became obvious and then was backed up with further research that an awful lot of the burden of healthcare um, falls upon the caregivers uh, mm-hmm. who take care of people yes. in their homes yes. or in, in the nursing home in some, t- in some instances or in various settings. Mm-hmm. Um, and these folks very often are not confident, nor are they well prepared, to do what is required of them. Mm-hmm. So um, we listened to the stories, many of them. Um, one of the interesting parts of this effort was whenever you talk to any group, better than 70% would raise their hands when you asked if anybody has been a caregiver or is a caregiver. And I guess if we said or is going to be a caregiver, we'd get even a higher percent. But anyway, um, so, um, you know, a few years back, um, health-centric advisors did some really landmark research on transitions, um, people going from one health care setting to another and where the glitches and problems are. And so I was familiar with that work, and when AARP embarked on um, promotion of the CARE Act, I wanted us to get that in Rhode Island. Mm. So um, we, went, as you do, went to the General Assembly, and uh, uh, Senator Gail Golden was fabulous and giving us the support for it. And then um, we did not have, uh, she was supported by Senator Satchel. Then we went to the House and met with the Speaker, who suggested Representative Eileen Norton as a sponsor in the House, and she became a real champion, as she has been for so many bills. Wonderful. All right. Representative well, McNamara, um, chairman of the committee, talked himself about being a primary caregiver mm. for a loved one. She had a lot and of so support. so we were able to put together yeah, a, a group that could get this law All right, l- uh, let me passed. Let me read a couple of things here. Most yep. Rhode Island registered voters aged 45 or older, 79% believe that being cared for at home with caregiver assistance is the ideal situation when the basic tax, tasks of life become more difficult due to aging or illness. Typical... Current family caregivers in Rhode Island are women over 55, 56%, and over 55, 70%. They're likely to be married, 67%, college-educated, 53%, and employed, 48%. And the average person they care for is 80 years old. Talk about that, Kathleen. That paints quite a picture, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Yes. uh, The numbers are quite staggering. Um, The sacrifices and the care that is provided are immense in many instances. Sometimes, however, I I need to say, sometimes it's just simple things that make the work of the caregivers 
uh, more possible. So, so let me more, ask you, what is this bill going to do? What what will this now, what does this offer to us exactly? Okay. What this bill does provide is that when a patient is being discharged um, the to, um, to care at home, um, in other words, somebody who can't uh, totally maintain themselves, okay. a caregiver is identified in the patient's medical record. Okay. In other words, who is at the home or um, uh, uh, often available to, to deliver the care. And it requires the hospital to notify that caregiver and to discuss the patient's plan of care prior to discharge. It also requires that the caregiver be given instruction prior to the patient's discharge Mm -hmm. on the tasks that they will have to perform in the home. Okay. And And is there there funding for this, Kathleen? Not at this point. Okay. Not at this point. But but, um, one of the things that this is designed to address is the incredible cost of readmissions, which have happened um, in far too many cases. Mm-hmm. And, and typically what happens, Patrice, is the, care, the uh, patient is discharged and they get home, and the caregiver, with all good intention, suddenly is faced with having to do things they've never done before, mm-hmm. don't know how to do, mm-hmm. and are scared to death. Okay. In addition, the patient may be in pain, may experience any other kind of discomfort, Uh, may have difficulty breathing, and the next thing you know, they're back in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And that is estimated to cost about $17 billion, Mm -hmm. that's B, Mm -hmm. in Medicare funds Mm -hmm. on unnecessary hospital Mm -hmm. readmissions that could be prevented largely by just having the caregivers know what to do. So it's really training for the caregivers. It is, yes. It's really what it is. targeted training to the individual situation they're in. All right, we're going to have to go to to the top of the hour, but if you can stand for a couple of minutes afterwards, I'd like to continue this for a little bit. Sure. All right, thanks so much, Kathleen. All right, we are going to the top of the hour. We have with us Kathleen Connelly, who who is the State Director of AARP for Rhode Island. The news is up next right here on News Talk 630 and 99.7 FM WPRO. We are the voice of Southern New England. I'm Patricia Raskin filling in for John DePietro for the John DePietro Show. I'm Patricia Raskin, and I'm filling in for John DePietro for today. And it's a beautiful 4th of July weekend. And we are talking to Kathleen Connell, State Director of AARP of Rhode Island. We're finishing up. And uh, I have with me in the studio uh, Nancy Thomas, who I think is one of the best, well, I think, PR people in Rhode Island. I mean, Nancy's just in the know, and she's also a dear friend. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Patricia. All right, so give us some of these great little facts. Oh, I'm just talking about the AARP magazine that I'm sure everybody on their 50th birthday, what comes in your mail is the... AARP magazine, and after we get over that initial shock, I think we all look forward to getting it every every month or every two months. And I noticed that um, one of the things that they do to really talk about how young 50 is today is to feature some of the celebrities that are turning 50 and that are um, involved. And the last magazine that just came in was Melissa Rivers. And Good there's a picture her. there with, um, with a member of her family. So it was really something, I think, before that was Robin Roberts. Mm-hmm. Um, Bob Dylan and Kevin Costner. So there you go. It's uh, it's get looking younger every day. Absolutely. <laughs> and welcome back, Kathleen. Thank you so much, and yeah. thank you for the uh, uh, praise of the magazine. People yeah. do love that magazine, yeah, and they read it, it cover to cover. Yeah, it's great. So tell us a little more. Um, got a few more minutes about what this new Care Act is going to do for caregivers. It's going to give them some specific training. And, you know, help them cope better when they go back into the home with their loved ones. But fill that out a little bit for us. Okay. Let me let me first just tell you, though, this bill was something of a dark horse at the start of the legislative session. Um, but we knew that AARP was dedicated to getting it in the states, and I think we have 28 states on board now. Mm. Um, it could not have happened without our partners in this effort who – could not have been more cooperative in ironing out the kinks, and that's the Hospital Association of Rhode Island Lifespan and the Rhode Island Chapter of the American Nurses Association. So kudos to them for helping us to make it happen. Um, And one of the things that was so powerful in getting this bill passed were the stories that the caregivers gave us, and Mm. uh, people related to that. And I would rather talk about the stories, but let me just give you a couple of numbers 
um, because they're pretty staggering. AARP's Public Policy Institute reports an estimated 148,000 Rhode Island caregivers step up to provide 142 million hours of care Mm. for an aging parent or Mm. loved one. Mm. Based on this data, the care that these family caregivers provide is valued at nearly $1.9 billion a year, and that's a billion with a B. So those numbers show you the extent of the care Mm -hmm. that is offered. We do know that people are being discharged um, sicker, frailer, um, from the hospital settings um, because that's the way the healthcare system Mm -hmm. is going. And so it's critical that somebody be on hand to ease the reentry into family life, which is absolutely important. So here's my question. Here's my question. If I am new to this program, I'm a caregiver, I'm going to take my parent home, what is it I'm going to get exactly before I I take them home and then bring them home that's really going to help me with this CARE Act? Okay, let's just assume that your parent is not able to be um, self-sustaining without some support because, you know, obviously a lot of people are going to be discharged with nothing um, needed. Um, But if that's not the case, your parent, let's say your mother, is going to say, um, Patricia's my caregiver. And so you will be given the opportunity, and they will have to talk to you to see if you are able to do this. Um, Or uh, if you are physically able, if you are mentally able. And then we have to figure out what this is. Is your mother um, in need of having dressings changed, uh, oxygen monitored, Mm -hmm. um, a host of, I, I can't even begin to describe the list of tasks. Sometimes they're simple. Um, you know, help from getting from bed to bath and and that kind of thing. And sometimes they are a great deal more complicated, especially when we get closer to the end of life. So they're going to need um, care from the caregiver, and the caregiver is going to to have to know how to do these things and also who to contact when they are over their head. They're going to get that kind of information and be armed with it to take some of the fear Mm -hmm. And some of the... um, And what about resource referral? What if there's something they need to get that they can't afford? Or what if there's a skill that they just don't feel comfortable with? You know, they don't feel comfortable with changing the bed, for example, or the bedpan. Exactly right. Then they're going to have to work on a discharge plan to address those concerns. Okay. And they have... Maybe... Okay. Go ahead. Maybe that person isn't going to be able to be the caregiver. Okay. Maybe, you know, they have to get um, in the home help for a period of time or, or forever. Or um, There are so many variables to it. So, so but, but if it's that person can't afford to do it alone. Right. But if that person can't afford it, it let's say right. that's determined they're not the best caregiver. But how do they handle that if they can't afford it? I mean, do, does, they, does the AARP Care Act help them find the affordable or help them find a program where they don't have to pay for it? At this point, um, that is not in place. But um, the uh, meeting, and I think there's a meeting next week on how this gets implemented because okay. obviously there's going to be a good deal of work on, um, in terms of the things that you're saying. Okay. But what you're saying is the dialogue is open because now – through this AARP program, people are getting an advocate to talk to them, to determine and to give them guidance and counseling, which they didn't have before. Right. Well, that's terrific. And actual physical training, if that's what's needed. Oh, that's... And how to change addressing, how to administer injections, whatever. Okay. Kathleen, this is great, and we'll have to have you come on again and talk about it. And, um, oh, good. I'd love to tell you some stories the next time, but the number is demanded to be told this time. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, and we'll be in touch. All right. And if people want to know more, how, where, where do they go? They can go to the um, AARP website, okay. and that is www.aarp.org slash caregiving. Okay. Thanks so much, Kathleen. All okay. Right. All right. Bye now.